Okay, hi, it's Louise at Spiral Bright Insight. I'm here to talk about the new moon in Scorpio, which is happening on the 1st of November. And this is when the sun and the moon are going to be at exactly the same point in the zodiac. They're meeting at 9 degrees 35 um, minutes of Scorpio this month. And, you know, this marks the start of a new lunar cycle. So there's quite a lot to say about this new moon. And what I do with these videos um, as a galactic and an intuitive astrologer, I bring in some of the key themes that are coming through the astrological chart, pull in some of the themes and energies of the fixed stars and the cosmic points as they are activating the chart and also feel into some of the energies in a more intuitive way and um, really with the aim of perhaps building what other astrologers are saying but you know with the intention of bringing something that's maybe new that we haven't considered or that we haven't looked at before so and um, thank you for watching thank you for being with my channel and you know if you do find my content useful please do share it and like it so that we can get it out to more people so what we are working with um you know obviously we have a new moon every month every 28 days this is the start of the lunar cycle it marks a point of something new a new beginning a reset and when the moon is new because they are together the sun and the moon and um, there is um there's no light coming from the sun to reflect on the moon so you know we talk about this being the dark moon and of course when we're talking about darkness and this is particularly enhanced through the energy of Scorpio which is perhaps one or regarded as one of the darker signs in the zodiac very much linked to shadow to going into the depths sort of below the surface and having the courage and the ability to perhaps at look at certain parts of life and issues in life that you know might make us slightly uncomfortable but ultimately you know this is hugely transformational and hugely healing so you know when we're working with the new moon you know this is time to really plant a seed and if we consider you know that seeds do need the darkness to be able to germinate and um, you know once they come to the surface they need the light to grow into the the blossom into the plants or flowers whatever it is that they are destined to be but they all start in the darkness as do we we start in the darkness of the womb so again there is that really sort of sense of huge time of fertility and potential here with this new moon and um, now you know, there's also the sense of, you know, we have to sit in the dark for a time in order to experience growth. Um, but we are also waiting for the light to come in. And again, you know, this um, new moon and the themes here really bring in really strong themes of light and dark. So what I wanted to say um, before we move on, um, it's taking place, the new moon is at 12.47pm in the UK on Friday the 1st, and it's actually the first um, new moon in a series of six, so that after this one the, the following five are all going to be at nine degrees of the respective signs, and of course nine in numerology is the number of endings and um, so I just find it really interesting that the fact we have this new moon energy which is really fertile it's lots of potential it's a new beginning it's something fresh you know that perhaps we haven't seen before but we're also sort of having to acknowledge that in order to have something new in order for something to be born to be birthed we need to have an ending and again it is really reminding us that of that cyclical nature of life you know the destroyer creator energy that comes through Scorpio really strongly and you know acknowledging that you know we are in this time where everything does appear to be collapsing and ending in huge amounts of endings in so many ways for so many of us but also you know we we have um the faith in this beautiful sort of promise of something being born out of that destruction you know we have to create the space by bringing things to a natural closure and completion so that the new can come in and has that room to grow so when we are working with Scorpio, you know, some of the themes that we can expect to be feeling, and I know this is really 
for me at this time because the sun is already in Scorpio. You know, we are dealing with um, themes of regeneration and renewal. There's that destroyer creator energy. Um, Scorpio is a water sign, so it's very emotional, very sensitive, very intuitive as well. It's about being able to feel and see what is going on beneath the surface. Sort of venture into areas that maybe, you know, make some people feel really uncomfortable. And that can be areas, you know, that we might consider to be taboo and um, esoteric realms, the occult. And, um, you know, obviously Scorpio season is when we have Halloween. You know, we talk about witches and ghouls. You know, we say that the veil is much thinner between the spiritual and physical worlds. And all of these themes are really very Scorpionic. We have themes of death and rebirth, um, themes of control and power, but also of exchange. So again, we know look to see where there are themes relating to exchange coming up in your life. And that's kind of at a personal level and at a collective level. Now, we also have with um, Scorpio, you know, Scorpio is more commonly sort of known um, to represent the scorpion. You know, we think of the scorpion having a sting in its tail of having a bit of a dangerous side, um, something that, you know, is at home in the dark and will come out and bite, you know, or defend itself if it needs to. But there's also two other um, animals that are associated with scorpio and they are the eagle and the phoenix you know and i've talked quite a lot about phoenix energy this year but again it just feels like this is such a time for phoenix energy to step forward because you know we are talking about the old being burnt down to ashes so that something new can come up and grow out of the ashes and be born and being brought into our reality and um, so we also have the theme of elimination again which is letting go ultimately but um you know very much shedding old layers of the self old ways which you know again is a theme that we've been talking about to death <laughs> for this year um, interesting that we have the um, it's the eighth sign of the zodiac, and obviously we're working with the eight energy. Twenty twenty four is a um, year; it's an eight year. So again, you you know we have this theme of power, of control, of infinity, of flow, and also really sort of um, bringing more balance to sort of the two the two realms or the two sides. And um, so you know when you've got an eight. You have equality in in the circles and um, each is a mirror of the other so you know again straddling the spiritual side and the physical side straddling light and dark you know all these opposites coming into the center and it's really interesting i'm going to talk about some of the fixed star alignments um in the second part of this video and how it's really interesting to see how they reflect those themes and um, so I'm going to show the chart in a minute, but just to sort of um, say that there is a huge amount of water in this chart, absolutely huge amounts of water. You know, we've already got Scorpio um, really strong as part of the new moon energy. OK, so, yeah, we can see, look at all this Scorpio energy. Mercury is in Scorpio still towards the final degree now, but still very much um still very much you know in that scorpionic energy we have saturn and neptune of course still in pisces and we have mars in cancer so you know we have this representation around the chart holding this water energy very much you know in um strengthening this water energy and obviously when we have lots of water you know we are feeling much more emotional we're feeling much more sensitive water can make us more intuitive as well and obviously it brings in the themes of flow so we're reminded that you know it is important to stay in flow at this time but there's also a real sense of cleansing that comes through the water obviously water being you know a vital part of life as well so that really sort of strong regeneration themes coming through coming through the chart so if we look at 
I've got my notes somewhere. Um, if we look at, you know, what is going on, and again, you know, I'm not going to take every single aspect out here. I just want to highlight some of the main ones. You know, we have the sun and moon up here at nine degrees, 35 minutes of Scorpio. And the only real aspect that the sun and the moon are making to other parts of the chart is a trine with Saturn. So, you know, this trine is very much, you know, it's, it's a water trine so it's very supportive there's lots of flow and um, Saturn in Pisces is really reminding us you know we're getting to the end of a cycle for Saturn in Pisces you know Pisces, Saturn is going to move into Aries next year and really start afresh bring in some really strong new energy so you know for Saturn at this time it is really reminding us how far we have come and to really check in and to you know, consider that, you know, it hasn't been easy, but we're getting to the point now where we're given the opportunity to really master a more spiritual side of ourselves and to connect with that. Um, you know, this is very much about support from Saturn, who is often seen as like the more patriarchal, but the sort of the wise master, um, the wise guru. You know, coming in to really help us through this time of deep regeneration and deep reset. We have this ongoing um, sextile between Jupiter and Chiron. So they're both at 20 degrees still. They're traveling together, both in retrograde at the moment. And, you know, again, this is just reminding us Jupiter is really expanding through access to new levels of information. You know, there may be sort of an expansion of um, division or having to choose a side, you know, which is, I can't, you know, say, escape the irony of that given, you know, what's coming up in the, in the States shortly after this new moon. But, you know, so there is going to be an increase in that potentially, but Jupiter also wants to know everything wants all the facts wants to consider all the sides and you know with this trying to chiron it is through having access to this information a lot of it coming from within because jupiter is retrograde having this access to information is really supporting our healing process and obviously with chiron in aries this is healing the wound of the self the wound of the identity um looking at perhaps where we have not been able to be our own leader, where we have relied on other people, you know, you know, and we've been talking, you know, to death about the fact that the South Node in Libra is very much about helping us to move away from codependent relationships and, you know, step it more into sovereignty. So again, Chiron in Aries is very much sort of supporting that process as well. So this is a really beautiful, supportive sex style that we're working with at this time and will continue to because they are going to travel together. Now, we also have Jupiter is opposing Venus. So again, you know, Venus wants to really, in Sagittarius, wants to take us higher, wants to appreciate the bigger picture, wants to value the bigger picture, value the journey, the adventure. And again, you know, we're reminded um, you know, that all of life is an adventure. And actually, if you're able to see it from a higher perspective, we can start to really appreciate even the more challenging parts of our world, of our life, of our journey. And then there is a star activating the sun and the moon that really helps us to sort of get to grips with that and to really um, integrate that. So I'll talk about that um, shortly. But again, you know, with, with Venus in Sagittarius, there's potentially new gifts and new talents coming through that, you know, maybe coming from, you know, a higher place potentially because Sagittarius is really, you know, helps us to rise up out of our 3D reality. Um, there's also the sense of, you know, new beliefs and valuing new belief systems coming in because Sagittarius does rule our belief system, as does Jupiter. Jupiter is the ruling planet of Sagittarius. So although this is an opposition, you know, and it is trying to pull us two ways that there is also a lot of support there as well so um you know we may be having access to new information that helps us to rise up and value the ability to see the bigger picture through that opposition we also have uranus over here in taurus retrograde is opposing mercury 
in Scorpio. Now, Mercury's already gone past an exact opposition earlier this week with with Uranus, but this opposition is still very valid at the time of the new moon. So again, you know, this is potentially quite a challenging, quite a tense aspect, but ultimately they are finding ways to work together. And Uranus, you know, again, we've talked about Uranus a lot, quite destabilizing, breaking through a really strong awakening energy, pulling us out of where we may have become really fixed and attached to our comfort zone, to the way things have always been. And Mercury in Scorpio is really throwing up some really deep, dark secrets and information that has been hidden in Scorpio in the depths. And again, you know, this is really a causing a lot of shocks and um, unexpected, you know, and news announcements potentially, but also, you know, quite destabilizing. So we might feel quite rattled. We might um, be feeling like the, you know, the kind of the ground or the, the carpet's been swept out from under us at this time. And this is kind of ongoing for this week, but certainly, you know, very strong at this new moon. And then, you know, we have this beautiful water trine. I talked about the water. We've got Mars trining and um, Mercury trining Neptune. So, you know, again, it's so much intuition, so much flow, so much emotion, you know, potentially lots of tears and obviously tears very valuable for how they can help us to express our emotions express our emotion but also very cleansing and um, so you know we may see more water in our world we've certainly not had any shortage of that over the over the last few months but again you know more metaphorically more energetically we're going to be feeling more emotional for sure but it's also reminding us that you know we can or we, we're encouraged to just stay in the flow to trust in the process to trust you know, that everything is happening for a reason. And as a lot of um, the energy comes up, I'm going to talk about Pluto and Mars in a minute. But as you know, Scorpio is digging up all these secrets and all this stuff that has been hidden and perhaps helping us to connect to emotions that may have been locked away through, you know, Taurus um, and, and Uranus and Taurus. But also we have Pluto at this anoretic degrees, again, bringing up secrets, you know, ex exposing things, you know, bringing stuff to light. So again, you know, it's potentially going to be quite, um, quite a challenging time over the coming weeks, but this water helps to just wash it all away to keep us in flow, to keep us, you know, in reminded that, you know, this is part of the process. So we have got this beautiful elemental support to help us sort of ride the waves of whatever it is that we're experiencing at this time. Um, what else can we say about this amazing chart? The big thing for me, and, you know, it almost takes the focus away from the sun and the moon. And the biggest thing here for me is this opposition between Pluto and Mars. And um, now a lot of astrologers, you know, are talking about this being a really dramatic, very tense, very challenging aspect. And I don't disagree with them at all. It is, you know, Pluto and Mars are the ruling planets of this new moon. They both rule Scorpio. Pluto is the modern ruler. Mars is the ancient ruler. You know, they're both really strong energies in themselves. And Pluto obviously wants to transform, but in that process is very happy to destroy everything in order to create. So there's a real death and rebirth god of the underworld type energy with pluto at this anoretic degree in capricorn again we've been talking about this to death and um, you know but again you know anything we're in the last the final minutes now of pluto's um sort of stay in capricorn this is the last time in a um in a new moon or a full moon chart that Pluto is going to be in Capricorn for another 240 to 250 years. So, you know, this is a big deal and where Pluto, you know, is hell bent on really finalizing anything that needs to be finished. This is the anoretic degree. There can be a real rush, a real drive, a real panic. <laughs> Um, in terms of the energy for to sort of tie things up, you know, get get all those loose ends sorted out, um, you know, and we've been talking about 
Capricorn, you know, the patriarchy systems structures. And Mars in opposition is the god of war, but Mars is in cancer. So Mars is not as fired up as he might be because the water is very soothing, very cleansing, is also, you know, designed to put the flames out. But it is nevertheless a really quite tense aspect. But it's forcing change. You know, both these signs are cardinal signs. This is about forcing something, you know, that the change that is going to be permanent and for sure but very action driven you know there is no sitting around there's no waiting now both signs at both sorry both planets at the anoretic degree you know something is really has to give and you know this is about meeting in the middle for these two um, planets to see if they can find that middle ground and um, and you know so you know yes for sure you know this this is tense this is challenging and the exact um opposition is going to take place on the third so two days after the new moon the same day that mercury moves from 29 degrees of scorpio into sagittarius so you know already on that day mercury wants to has got all the information he wanted to get from the underworld or from the depths, all the secrets have been exposed. He now wants to really rise up and sort of see the bigger picture and go exploring and see where, you know, this information and these new beliefs and understandings can take us, him. Um, but, you know, let's just look at sort of maybe an alternative or a, an, an additional um, expression of this opposition, this Mars-Pluto opposition on the axis of security. Pluto, sorry, Capricorn is at the top of the chart. It rules the 10th house. Cancer is at the bottom, ruling the fourth house. So we've got this real sense of, you know, in the 10th house, this is where you express yourself in a very public way, where you show up, where you, you know, it, it rules your vocation, your profession, your calling in life. But it is very much about being seen. It's also at the top of the chart. So, you know, this is like the closest point we can get to in the chart between what we would symbolically or metaphorically describe as our higher self. Although Pisces is the point where we step into that energy, where we let go of our sort of 3D of our physical reality and step into all that is. Capricorn, you know, you're still very much in the physical, Capricorn being an earth sign, but you have this potential to really access, to bridge the higher realms, the higher unseen world, your spiritual self, and really bring it down into the physical. So this is very much about being a bridge. And I really love that um, sort of um, expression of Capricorn you know Capricorn for me really does represent the ascension journey you know the ability to persevere to keep going to keep climbing you know even when you're standing at the bottom of the mountain having the faith that you know you just know that it's worth making way and making all that effort and pu putting the work in to get to the top even when you can't see the summit and you don't know what it's going to be like up there you just know that you have to get there and that for me really encapsulates um the whole ascension journey for so many of us it's having that faith that determination and that just inner knowing that you know it's it's something that has to be done and you're going to do it come what may with cancer you know cancer is at the bottom of the chart but this energy is really holding us rooting us down when we're working with cancer we're working with our emotions for sure we're working with our childhood potentially but we're also really connecting to our foundations where we've come from and this of course is our ancestry but the other um expression of cancer is the womb because cancer is the mother energy the matriarch the maternal nurturing loving compassionate energy that keeps us safe that protects us that holds us in that beautiful safe warm space Cancer is the crab, you know, the shell of protection, the cave, but ultimately the womb. And, you know, very interesting, as I've talked about at the beginning with this new moon energy, you know, this is the dark space, that void where we plant a seed, where where we can create, where we are born from. And of course, with the waters 
being really strong in this chart. You know, we're reminded of um, the waters of life, but also that amniotic fluid that keeps us safe, that keeps us nourished, that keeps us sort of alive until the moment where we are ready to leave the womb, to leave that safe space, to move down that birth canal and to be born into the light. And oh my goodness, this opposition for me is just the absolute epitome of that process. You know, we feel at this time, this dark moon, we're in this Scorpio energy, you know, it is very much like being in that birth canal, you know, that kind of, we we feel alone, you know, we can't necessarily see what's going on. There is a sense of fear. There's a huge sense of fear. There's also a lot of grief coming up because we know that we're letting go of something. We know we're in this process of transformation. It is scary. We don't know where we're going. We don't know what it's going to look like. You know, there can be that real panic as well, you know, again, and with the anoretic degree energy, often there is a panic. So it's like, oh, I've got to finish, you know, it's like I've got to get something done and, you know, I've got a deadline and, oh, um, you know, I'm just reminded, you know, the process of giving birth is terrifying, you know, and how many women have, you know, been at that point where you just suddenly say, oh, I don't want to do this anymore. You know, can we go back? We I can do this. And it's like, oh. um it's at that point that you just have to surrender and trust that the body knows exactly what it is doing you know this is part of a natural cycle it's a natural thing you know for most of us you know often there does have to be intervention but you know if we're lucky to, enough to have a natural birth and that trust that process you know it is the body will just kick in instinct kicks in and it just happens you know almost you have to get out of the way and um, so this is about surrendering to the process ultimately and really trusting that the body that nature that the universe knows exactly what is going on and yes acknowledging that yeah you know we may have a change of heart we may be feeling like we don't want to do this it's too much and how many times have we felt like that but ultimately you know, it feels like this final push, this final sort of dark night of the soul going through, you know, we've separated from the womb, from that safe space, from what we've always known. We don't know what happens, you know, when we sort of come out at the other end, but we just have to trust. Um, also, when we're working with cancer and with Mars in cancer, you know, Mars is energizing us. It's giving us motivation. It's giving us drive to really turn inwards, to connect with our inner world, to really acknowledge our inner, mo inner, inner emotions, to respect them, you know, to see how they give us power and ultimately embracing our vulnerability, you know, embracing what it is that perhaps, you know, makes us feel unsafe or uncertain or insecure. You know, this is um, and, and really understanding that it is our vulnerability and that softness um, that gives us our power ultimately. You know, and sometimes it is about going within and connecting with our inner light that gives us the most power that enables us to connect to our power. And that often this requires going into the darker spaces, sitting with our shadow, really looking at what it is that makes us feel uncomfortable, makes us feel vulnerable, makes us, you know, even feel weak potentially, but ultimately, you know, embracing that and sitting with it and seeing that when we look at our fears straight in the eye, they're often not what we thought they were. And often, you know, the darkest, darkest energies can actually be the brightest light when we really look at them and ask them what it is that they are here to teach us and to show us and I talked about this in my recent video where I talked about you know the Shapley attractor and the shadow and fear again you know this is just a continuation of that you know it does really feel that you know this is the dark night of the soul but also that there's so much beauty and new birth and renewal and regeneration coming through that and it is really you know about persevering and trusting and having faith in this incredible process when we're able to sort of rise up and see it from a higher perspective so you know with Capric with Pluto in Capricorn you know Pluto is taking us into the depths for sure, forcing us to look at, you know, what is no longer working, what has been hidden in the shadows, forcing us to let go of it, surrender and release 
what no longer serves us and what is no longer fit for purpose. You know, Pluto is pulling everything to the ground where, you know, it has become old and stale and corrupt for sure. But we also have, you know, this beautiful sort of synergy, if you like, with the light and the dark, because Pluto is very much the god of the underworld, but going into the top end or the, the last minutes of Capricorn, it is about kind of connecting to that more spiritual self, you know, really being on that bridge between the physical and the spiritual, between the dark and the light, you know, and acknowledging, reminding us that we need to embrace and work with our shadow if we are to be able to rise up and to ascend. You know, I talked in my last video about the crux, about this sort of, we have to descend to ascend. This is about being fully embodied, being fully physical, you know, feeling it all in our bones in order to be able to rise up and to connect more with our higher selves and more with the fifth dimension, which is where we are heading to. But, you know, with this Capric with sorry, with this Cancer opposition in Mars, Mars is just saying, actually, you know, Yes, we need to connect with our inner light. We need to embrace our own emotions. We need to be completely, you know, vulnerable potentially with part with this experience. But also, you know, we need the space. We need to really explore, you know, our foundations, what keeps us rooted in the physical body, you know, and the physical world again, in order to make this sort of jump, this leap into this higher dimension, into this higher state of being. So again, you know, Mars in Cancer, you know, it is bringing us into that womb space, into the depths, into the shadows in order to connect with our innermost light. So again, you know, with both Cancer and Capricorn, Mars and Pluto, we have these images, this merging of the light and the dark, you know, finding the way, finding that middle ground, that center point, that point of integration, which is where, you know, the magic happens. So, you know, it is very much as if we are in this last push this last sort of gasp of Pluto before we are reborn and of course coming out of Cancer into Leo out from the womb down the birth canal into the bright light of Leo you know th th this is um this is just so symbolic for what we are going through and you know the Leo energy coming in the rising of the sun after the dark night of the soul it is you know, feeling empowered, feeling more sovereign, feeling more at one with who we are and being ready to shine that light and stand in our sovereignty. This, we do have power in numbers. You know, I keep seeing this army of light rising up, joining together. And again, you know, with so much division and separation, you know, keeping us apart, making us choose sides. You know, this has been our reality for so long. But as we start to sort of shift our perception and our understanding and the energies start to shift us and help us to really see, you know, what more of what is going on, the secrets coming to light, but the secret of who we are and this connect with the light within inside of us. You know, this is when the separation starts to dissolve and we realise that actually, although we may be very different from each other, you know, ultimately we can stand together and we can stand unified and, and the old ways simply uh, no longer have any energy to feed off and they just have to let go and 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 surrender so this is about the old surrendering as well as as we surrender to it's a massive time of sort of yeah, letting go and stepping into this higher consciousness this higher way of being and ultimately unity consciousness coming through very very strongly here so, you know, I talked at the beginning about Scorpio being very much about this sort of power play, control, exchange, you know, and um, as long as we play into the hands of those that are trying to control and direct the show, you know, we are giving our power to them. We're allowing them and permitting them to continue when we start to say no and this can be energetically as well as physically standing up. It doesn't necessarily mean going and joining a process and, you know, waving and, and and speaking out we can do this energetically we can just say no we have had enough and that is when the energy starts to shift so that is coming through really strongly in this chart and of course you know we've got the beautiful support from the outer planets in this sort of ongoing grand minor trine you know with pluto 
Uranus and Neptune all in these later degrees and um, these final degrees of their respective signs lending the support. So this very much universal support from the cosmos to help us go through this process. So I'm just going to talk about some of the fixed star alignments. Now, um, I've done a video on a crux, which I recommend you watch if you feel called. Um, a crux is actually in a three degree orb with the sun and the moon at the time of this new moon in Scorpio. So a crux is at 12 degrees, 12 minutes of Scorpio, obviously the moon nine degrees, 35. So normally with fixed stars, we tend to keep it at a two degree orb. But I do feel that a crux is really influencing this new moon and the energy of the new moon and what it is that we are trying to bring in you know as I talked about in my last video about a crux you know this is about being at a crossroads a crux is the cross the southern cross you know a reminder that you know we have all we we walk in different paths we we have different paths to walk we are going in different directions you know even on our own um sort of unique individual journey we're going to take many different paths we're going to try different sort of outfits on for size we're going to have different role, roles there's all sorts of different aspects and expressions of our journey but when we have the cross you know this is about two paths two sides two ways of being not necessarily coming together, but finding that middle ground, that meeting point, that crux, that sort of inner light, that um, the, the thing, the thread that binds us together. And for me, this new moon is really encouraging us to look at that. You know, the separation and division has become so loud, so extreme in our world. But ultimately, you know, this is about having being given this invitation and this beautiful support to find that common thread, that common ground doesn't mean coming in and saying yeah you know we all agree and we're all wanting to be the same absolutely not and uh, the Aquarian age is not about that this is about finding out um, our unique what makes us unique and what we have to contribute um, to the great whole but also standing side to side shoulder to shoulder and again you know I do feel that a lot of what is going to come to light over this time is going to trigger that even more strongly and um, so you know it's also reminding us that yes these times are hard you know there is a lot of pain there is a lot of grief there is a lot of loss there is a lot of fear you know it is a dark night of the soul for so many of us but a crux reminds us that there is purpose in the pain and that actually you you know, we are coming back to ultimately always our inner light, that crux, that heart of the matter that lies within our physical vessels, that lies within each one of us. And I do recommend you watch um, the video because I, I go into a lot more detail about that and the themes that are coming through. Um, but, you know, we have this energy supporting the sun and the moon for this new beginning. We also have Cassiopeia um, star system. The star Shadir is almost exactly conjunct the sun and the moon. And this, you know, Cassiopeia is very much regal, royal queen energy. So bringing in this very much sort of feminine um, way um, you know, and again, with the divine feminine way, it isn't necessarily about being weak, far from it. It is about standing in our strength, being sovereign, but being gentle, being soft, having more creative and intuitive and compassionate approach to, you know, how we rule and how we lead our lives. And again, you know, it is bringing in this more sort of feminine rulership, feminine leadership. So, you know, very strong, very resilient, but full of grace, full of love, more acceptance, more dignity, more honor, sort of pulling in the more mystical, intuitive, possibly esoteric way. So again, more spiritual. So again, you know, th this energy Shadir Shadar is really helping us to um you know consider the new way you know what it might look like and this beautiful but very noble very dignified very graceful energy coming through to support the moon and the sun at this time um you know so this is about wisdom instead of anger and conflict ultimately and being able to stand as I said shoulder to shoulder 
And um, we also have the sun and the moon in opposition to Titawin in the Andromedan constellation. It's again, you know, when we have Andromeda being activated as a fixed star, you know, whichever of the stars it is, it is really inviting us to break free of chains that have held us, that have kept us bound, kept us restricted. Sort of that freedom is a really, really strong theme. And um, being able to sort of be more fluid and maybe shape shift and consider alternative options for sure. Andromedan energy is much higher frequency than we would be familiar with from our 3D perspective, but it is very much about wisdom and, um, and knowledge and having access to, you know, the wisdom that is going to see us through, that is going to help us break free where we've become attached, where we have become blocked in. And um, so really, really beautiful energy, you know, very transformational, but also the real sense of a spiritual warrior comes through, you know, and obviously with Mars and Pluto, um, you know, very active in the chart, you know, these are quite warrior like energies. But again, it is taking that, you know, Mars in Cancer is much more compassionate, much more feeling more intuitive, more in touch with his emotions. So again, you know, really reflects that Andromedan frequency as well. You know, yes, we want to fight, but it doesn't have to involve bloodshed and trauma this time. It has done pop before. It doesn't have to going forward. And um, Mercury is conjunct Hadar in, in or Beta Centauri in the Centaurus constellation. Again, you know, Mercury bringing through this higher understanding of these Hadarian frequencies and themes, which are ultimately all about unconditional love connecting to nature connecting to a much more collaborative way of being a collaborative way of working understanding that we are all one you know this unity consciousness comes through really strongly with Hadar and um, but yeah just beautiful you know with Hadar it is almost as if we breathe love there is nothing other than love there is no other way so again that is really beautiful and sort of bringing through this kind of understanding and these messages at this time from Hadar and also understanding the power of nature you know which ultimately brings us back to Gaia and earth and her signature and power of our physical bodies as well which takes us back to a crux so so many things sort of weaving together really beautifully um we also have Venus is conjunct the great attractor, one of the most powerful cosmic points. You know, Venus really showing us where we can embrace new gifts, new ways, new, new understanding and value new belief systems. But, you know, this is about with the great attractor, this is about having the ability to bend time, to see round corners, to have that really psychic vision, to know all there is to know without anybody trying to pull the wool over our eyes. And, um, you know, and it really takes us much, much higher higher than perhaps we have been before so it's really you know empowering to have the great attractor activated in this chart at this time with everything else that is going on and Venus is also opposing Rigel or Rigel in the Orion constellation talked about Rigel quite a lot um but for me this is about really having the ability to push through confusion to release any sort of programming or mind control or manipulation of, of our understanding of information that has kept us locked in one way of seeing things. You know, Regal really shines a light on, you know, where that might have been taking place and helps us to really push through it. And um, so again, you know, it's an opposition. We have this energy almost being projected onto us. We need to reach out and take it. It isn't necessarily there and integrated, but it is an option if we are ready to open our minds and consider a different way of looking at things um so those are the main actually no there is one thing <laughs> so we've talked about obviously pluto um very close to lyra alad far so again we have our sort of galactic um ancestry if you will sort of coming into play a part um What's really beautiful is the fact that Mars at 29 degrees of Cancer is conjunct Monoceros, one of the um, stars in Monoceros, which is unicorn energy. And I just love that. You know, if we come back to this 
image of you know mars is really pushing us down the birth canal you know being born out of the womb um you know we have the unicorn energy literally guiding us leading us leading the way shining a light holding space and obviously the unicorn energy really high frequency very much about unity and peace hope and um, really helping us to step into a much lighter way which is going to come as mars moves into leo of course you know that inner child that frequency of play and joy and fun so that is so beautiful to have monoceros sort of lighting up this opposition again you know like i said there's different ways to see this aspect but you know when we add in the unicorn frequency it just really elevates it and the other incredible thing for me is the fact that the asteroid hawaii which i use and many of us use as a marker for lemuria is also so at 29 degrees of cancer again you know sometimes I just well I often say wow when I look at the charts but you can't really make it up you know we have this Lemurian frequency our Lemurian ancestry all that wisdom that was held in those times you know this beautiful civilization very connected to mother god to earth to gaia to unconditional love to the 5d to that spiritual way of being you know, again, all that we've been talking about, um, you know, through this chart is coming to light, shining the way, holding the space as we move through this last sign of final push, this last part of the birth canal before we are reborn into this new way of being. And obviously, as we move into 2025, you know, we've got a lot of Aries energy being activated with Neptune and Saturn both moving into Aries. So, you know, this is we really are in the final throes. And yes, it feels like, oh, my goodness, you know, is everything just going to completely disintegrate? But actually, you know, there is so much hope coming through, you know, every time we look at the chart, there is always this guiding light, um, this, you know, this beautiful energy just holding that sort of helping us to keep our faith alive, um, if you like. So, you know, so much beautiful divine feminine energy, as well as the darker aspects as well. So again, just coming together, you know, integrating that shadow, um, where we have Mars sort of reconnecting us with our Lemurian ancestry and our Lemurian heritage and all those memories that so many of us have from that time. We have Pluto in opposition, um, very close to Altair in Aquila, and that is one of the stars that has connections to Atlantis as well. So as Pluto moves back into Aquarius, that star energy is going to be activated and Hawaii will move in, and will remain in opposition for a, you know a short time as as Hawaii moves into the first degree zero and one degree of Leo. So again, you know we have this kind of push pull between Atlantis between Lemuria. It's almost as if you know so much of that past history is playing out. But this time we get to rewrite the story. This time you know it can be different. So that is all I have to share. As always, there are a million other things I could say. Um, but you know it's about pulling out sort of the key themes and what is speaking to me or what is shouting the loudest at this time. So no doubt that you know these are challenging times. But I hope I've given you a different perspective, perhaps something new to consider. And, um, you know, and, you know, yeah, it, it is it just it never ceases to inspire and amaze me how the astrology is sort of being reflected in what is going on through the energies and, and how those are manifesting and sort of playing out in our reality. So if you've got this far, thank you so much. Um, you probably know, but I'll just remind you, I have a monthly newsletter that I send out. It will be going out at the end of the week, hopefully. I still have to write it, but that is just a kind of heads up of what to expect for the month ahead and where we're at for November. That's right, isn't it? Um, November 2024, as we step into the 11th month of the year. 
and um, you can sign up for that on my website spiralbright.co.uk and I do have um, readings available um, energy work available card readings so if you are looking for insight or support with anything you know feel free to get in touch and let's explore how we can work together um, if you are interested in learning more about galactic astrology specifically I highly recommend Julia Belaz's course and um, the link to that is in my um, description box it's on um, teachable um, and that is you know you can either do a galactic astrology 101 which kind of gives you a basic understanding of how to read your chart and interpret it, the energies or if you wanted to take it further and do the course that I did the certified practitioner course that is really extensive but incredible and highly recommend doing that as well even if you don't want to be a practitioner the content that you get in that course is just beyond so um yeah I'm going to leave it there. Thank you so much for watching and I will be back soon.